Good day. The Pickle Barrel and the Luciferian Deep State of God's Family. Brer Caleb, PhD. Good day, this is Brer Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker. I continue to work on a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Today we're going to discuss the pickle barrel and the Luciferian deep state of God's family. Folks, it's a terrible term. A pickle barrel and a Luciferian deep state of God's family. What are we talking about? We're talking about the enablers. We know that they are supported or supporting Mr. Trump. We also see the tremendous sad scenarios. And when I say tremendous, I'm appalled by finding out what the GOP really stands for. I was told when I lived in Canada that it was get old people. And now that I'm older myself, I'm wondering what in the world are they talking about? Those people don't even know what truth is anymore. They don't know what guts is anymore. And when someone stands up and acknowledges the truth, they attack him. So what is happening with the GOP? What is happening with the enablers of the body of Christ? Those that put this man, Trump, a disaster in place and are hanging on to him because God had told him. Folks, the pickle barrel and the Luciferian deep state of God's family, the body of Christ. Let's find out what we can discover and how we can change this terrible, sad scenario. You might wonder, what is the Luciferian deep state? And how is it causing Freemasonry? You know that I've been talking about some Freemason activities and encounters. I was unfortunate enough to have a friend for over 10 years. And he happened to be a Freemason. And for me, at that time, it didn't matter. But when he started interfering because I disagreed with him, he mentioned to me that... His offer was important to him. He wanted half of my business and he would open up his 15,000 square foot home. And when I refused, he threatened me. He said, you will regret this. I will show you how much power I have as a Freemason because I'm the head of the Freemasons here. And all those people have to come to me because I tell them what to do. And unfortunately, since then, 18 years in court, six years with lawyers and 12 years without lawyers being self-defense i learned the hard way what freemasons are and so when we have a deep state of freemasonry and a terror triad of israel saudi arabia and erdogan according to vt senior editor gordon duff then investigations into the deep roots and the tacticals of tactics of the dark side very important because if we understand what is really happening among the body of Christ, then maybe, maybe you come to understand that withdrawing your support for Mr. Trump is not foolish. It is a very smart thing. And if the leadership of the GOP is watching this, folks, I hope that you grow some balls and become a man. Because men will make decisions. When good is good and bad is evil, then make a decision to be a leader, a man that stands before God Almighty and his family. Now, we are restorative justice and we are dealing with a deception that is sad. And deception simplified is hopefully helping you. As I mentioned, my name is Barack Caleb. And as Brad Caleb, I've prepared videos to help the body of Christ. But we cannot escape it that we are dealing with PMS. And I'm not scaring the women today. I'm just sharing with you that today we are dealing with politics. 
We are dealing with money and we are dealing with spirituality or religion. I put it in a book together and it's available on Amazon. But you know, deception protocol is something that a lot of people have problems with because they don't understand that deception has gone so deep that we are so used to it. Now, to simplify it, are, are you familiar with the story of the dog and the swine? Freemasonry say they are not needed no more and they are more than ever needed, they claim. So why are their ranks dwindling? The gospel spiritual meaning and the difficulty to understand the knowledge of the way, the truth and the light. Is there a confusion, folks, between Freemasonry and the way, the truth and the light? They were not given to people whose lower animal nature is portrayed as dogs and swines. Because the Bible says, very simple, never give what is holy or throw your pearls before the swines. Otherwise, they will trample them with their feet and they will turn around and attack you. That is in Matthew 7, verse 6. Now, there is an explanation and those are big books written by learned men. And this one is John Gill's explanation. And the phrase is just, just used, not the literal, but he explains it is generally understood of not delivering or communicating the Holy Word of God and the truth of the gospel comparable to pearls or the ordinances of it to prescribe and the story in simplicity so that the people who are vile and sin sinful, men that are just totally against God, he who is violent and a furious oppressor and disrespectful swears, they swear all the time, are uh, compared to dogs and to such who are scandalously vile, impure in their lives, people that don't care, that live like pigs, and the conversation then are therefore compared to swine. So in other words, when someone lives like the ultimate lifestyle, couldn't care less, takes whatever he wants, with guns and does whatever he wants. Doesn't that sound familiar? A lifestyle that we see and hear often on TV or people even portray in videos when they're singing songs. They told the real story to a secret society, one that crosses all three religions of the book, explaining where Christian evangelists, Saudi Wahhabis, and Zionist extremists joined at the hip against democracy across the planet. Have you ever heard about this story? Ever wondered what is happening in Turkey and why it is that Erdogan is backing Al-Qaeda against Russia and Syria? Is there a bond between them? And if so, what is going on? Individually, they oppose Baytism, a Baytism, an anti-Masonic movement that took a hole in Egypt in under Nasser, Syria under the Assad and Iran under Saddam. Gaddafi, Baytism is an Arabic nationalist ideology that promotes the development and creation of a unified Arab state through a vanguard party's leadership over a progressive revolutionary government. It recognized Freemasonry inside Islam and the Islamic Brotherhood as financed by Saudi Arabia and Qatar as a form of Zionism. Zionism is not Jewish and it is an offshoot of Freemasonry that worships the old gods and that one god they place above all. Can you still break the cycle? Find a balance in your life and even influence many despite the upside down world. Any nation that opposes Freemason Rothschild's rule with the incumbent central bank and debt slavery gases its people and must be cleansed and enslaved by terrorists as done in Syria and in Iraq. 
to enjoy freedom and democracy. The Federal Reserve Cartel, the Freemason Bank of the U.S. and the House of Rothschild. In 1789, Alexander Hamilton became the first Treasury Secretary of the United States. Hamilton was one of many founding fathers who were Freemasons. He had close relations with the Rothschild family, which owned the Bank of England and leads the European Freemason movement. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, Ethan Allen, Samuel Adams, Patrick Henry, John Brown, and Roger Sherman were all Masons. When Benjamin Franklin journeyed to France to seek American revolutionaries' financial help, his meeting took place at Rothschild's bank. He brokered arms sales via German Mason Baron von Steuben. His committees of correspondence operated through free Mason channels and paralleled a British spy network. In 1776, Franklin became de facto ambassador to France, and in 1779, he became grandmaster of the French Neu Sirs, the Nine Sisters Lodge, to which John Paul Jones and Voltaire belonged. Franklin was also a member of the more secretive Royal Lodge of Commanders of the Temple West of Carcassonne, whose members included Frederick Prince of Wales. While Franklin preached temperance in the US, he cavorted wildly with his Lodge brothers in Europe. See, Franklin served as Postmaster General from 1750 to 1775, a role traditionally relegated uh, to British spies. So with Rothschild's financing, Alexander Hamilton founded two New York banks, including the Bank of New York. He died in a gun battle with Aaron Burr, who founded Bank of Manhattan with Coon Lope financing. Hamilton exemplified the contempt which the eight families hold towards ordinary people, once stating all communities divide themselves into the few and the many. The first are the rich and well-born, and the others the masses of the people. The people are turbulent and changing. They seldom judge and determine right. Give therefore to the first class a distinct permanent share of government they will check the unsteadiness of the second. Hamilton was the only, uh, the first in eight families, cronies, to hold the critical position of Treasury Secretary. In recent times, Kennedy Treasury Secretary Douglas Dillon came from Dillon Red, now part of the UBS Warburg. Nixon Treasury Secretaries David Kennedy and William Simon came from Continental Illinois Bank, and now part of the America. And Solomon Brothers, now part of the Citigroup, Chartered Treasury Secretary Michael Blumenthal came from Goldberg Sachs. And Re uh, Reagan Treasury Secretary Donald Reagan came from Merrill Lynch, now part of the Bank of America. And Bush Senior Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady came from Dillon Reed, UBS Warburg. And Henry Paulson came from Goldman Sachs. Obama's Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner worked as Kissinger's Associates and the New York Fed. Folks, Thomas Jefferson argued that the United States needed a publicly owned central bank so European monarchs and aristocrats could not print money to control the new nation's affair. Now this is how it started. Jefferson and extolled a country which expects to remain ignorant and free, expects that which has never been and that which will never be. There is scarce 
certainly a king in a hundred who would not, if he could, follow the example of the pharaoh, get first all the people's money, then all their lands, and then make them and their children servants forever, banking establishment. Uh-oh. That so if they become servants forever banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies folks do you hear me if you are dependent on a bank that is more dangerous than a army surrounding you already they have raised up a money aristocracy jefferson watched as the european banking conspiracy to control the united states unfolded weighing in Single acts of tyranny may be ascribed to the accidental opinion of the day, but a series of oppressions begun at the distinguished period, unalterable through every change of ministers, to plainly prove a deliberate systemic plan of reducing us into slavery. But the Rothschilds sponsored Hamilton's argument for a private U.S. central bank, carrying the day. In 1791, the Bank of the United States, the BUS, was founded with the Rothschilds' principal owners. The bank's charters was to run out in 1811. Public opinion, opinion ran for revoking the charter and replacing it with a Jeffersonian public central bank. They postponed the debate as the Euro bankers plunged the nations into the War of 1812. Amidst a climate of fear and economic hardship, Hamilton's bank got its charter renewed in 1816. Roger Livingston helped Sherman and Franklin write the Declaration of Independence. He gave George Washington his oath of office while he was Grand Master of the New York Grand Lodge of Freemasons. Washington himself was Grand Master of the Virginia Lodge. Of the general officers in the Revolutionary Army, 33 were Masons. It was highly symbolic since 33rd degree Masons become Illuminati. Populist founders led by John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison and Thomas Paine are Masons. They wanted to, serve, uh, to sever ties with the British Crown. Still, they got overruled by the Masons faction led by Washington, Hamilton, and Grand Master of St. Andrew Lodge in Boston, General Joseph Warren, who wanted to defy Parliament but remain loyal to the Crown. St. Andrew Lodge was the hub of the New World. This is just a little bit of the history that most likely, as an American, you should be familiar with. As an outsider or people living in Europe, this might be new for you. But now we're coming back to today. Why is Turkey and Russia arguing about Syria? Al-Qaeda is a Scottish Rite Freemasonry group set up initially under Gladio the NATO program dating from 1970. Erdogan is a Scottish Rite Freemason, an Islamist. He is an Islamic, representing the Muslim Brotherhood, a Scottish Rite Freeman group set up in 1920. All had roots in the Middle Ages and before that, so it goes way back. But for Turkey, Erdogan is the latest Sultanic it, oh man, here's the sultanic adoration of Salonika shepherd movement that began as the young Turks. Salonika, Thessalonica, now in Greece of Turkey for centuries, a significant city with Europe's largest Jewish population, 80,000 people. The birthplace of free Masonic movements for the Baptists. And the truth shall bear witness of itself, does the Bible say. For most of the body of Christ, the destruction of standards, the end time, is a scary proposition. No matter if you're a Jew, a Muslim, a Christian, evangelical, or just a politician, you ought to know this. What is going on? Just for your own loved ones and 
progressive realization of reality is better than relying on the news. We live in a world moving at a rapid rate. Many people are looking for ways they can get protection or they can find protection against the changes that modernity normally brings. When you see the changes with what we see our jobs at risk of being lost through automation, you must stay ahead of the curve if you can. You can employ many strategies to future-proof yourself, but we will discuss just this one thing. I am talking about the body of Christ. Are they understanding what we just read? What I just wanted to emphasize. I want you to be aware that there is a bigger thing going on. And if you supported Mr. Trump, it's a crime family and you will hear more about it. Mr. Trump has been involved with people that are only serving another God than you thought. It's not God the Father. And even in the religion, the changes that occurred have nothing to do with God the Father. Yet in your mind, in your heart, you're seeking the truth. Why not go and open your eyes, folks? Assess your strength and your weaknesses. I know that people find it hard to assess themselves uh, accurately. As for strength, many of us are too modest to say what we do well. In terms of weaknesses, usually people do not like to look uh, too deep at what we don't do well. And it makes them uncomfortable. However, if you have an accurate picture of what you can do, your weaknesses and your strengths, Maybe you will be honest enough to acknowledge that the way this is going, if you are still supporting as the body of Christ, a group of people that cannot stand up, that somebody has been killed, one day they have a wake and the next day they say, oh, didn't it didn't happen. It's okay. They have a loony bin as a representative, but C has the support from Trump and therefore we're scared, folks. If this is the way you want to live, then that's the way you will live. But don't look down and don't look up. Yes. I mean, just face it. Reality is you make stupid decisions, therefore you will find stupidity around you. But if you want to change, become a man and acknowledge who you are. If you make mistakes, it's okay. Then repent. As a prodigal son, I had to recognize that when I was wrong, with my face flat in the dirt, and the other people call it shit because they have a big boot or shit, and you are laying right flat in the middle of it, and you're Jewish on top of it, it's not a nice place, folks. But in case you want to get out of this, just remember, God the Father, He loves you so much that if you turn around and repent, He will accept you. Because we are his children. Whether we smell or not, whether we have been stupid or not, he will forgive us. But we need to repent. And remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. Bless you. Bye bye.